Daniel chapter 3. That's very, very, very familiar chapter. We've heard this chapter all of our lives. Uh, but I was reading it the other day and run across a little something I'm going to share with you. You keep your Bibles open. I'll try to stay right here in this chapter and uh, say a few words out of this, these verses of Scripture. And uh, I'd like to talk to you tonight, uh, today, about staying calm in troubled times. Amen. Staying calm, and we are in troubled times. We are probably in troubled times more than most of us has ever been. Uh, uh, troubled times in our in our hearts, our lives. Politically, we're in we're in trouble sometimes. Never uh, been a day of political trouble like we've got going on at the present. Spiritually, we're in deep trouble uh, in these days. Spiritually, a lot of uh, falseness and a lot of wrongness in in our spiritual realms of life. Physically, physically, there's trouble times. Uh, things going on, the virus, different things that's happening in our country and our lives physically that we're facing and going through. Right. And uh, financially, uh, you'd be surprised how many people's in trouble uh, financially. Amen. One of, the, one of the worst things they ever gave us was credit cards. Amen. Right. And uh, people are in financial problems. Uh, emotionally, emotionally, people just uh, at so much unrest. And you would have to say, you'd have to say, we're in trouble sometimes. Even in the churches today, uh, we're in trouble sometimes. Wonder where people's going to come back or not. Wonder what's going to happen. Wonder where, where we're going from here. Uh, what's going to take place in, in this and that. So we're in trouble sometimes. And here in this chapter, here in this chapter, it was a time of trouble. I thought about verse number one. It was a time of false gods. The Bible said, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits and he set it up in the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. Read this right, that thing was 90 foot tall and nine foot wide. And it was a God, a false God. It was a God that could not see. It's a God that had eyes and couldn't see, ears and couldn't hear, hands that couldn't shake or feel, uh, feet that couldn't walk. It was a God, but it was a dead God. It was a time that people was worshiping a false god. And we're living in a day where people are worshiping a false god. They're worshiping a god that they don't even know who he is. Amen. And they're worshiping a god that's a false god, not the true uh, living god. And we're in that day in our country. Not only there was a time of false worship. Verse number 2 down through verse 7 so it said, Nebuchadnezzar the king gathered the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and all the rulers of the providence to come to dedicate the image. And you know the story. He said, when you play, uh, bow, uh, I play all this music and everything, he said, you bow down. Bow down, he said, uh, to the God that I have put up. The king, uh, whosoever falleth not and worship not, this shall be cast in the midst of a burning fire. First, it was a time of false worship. They were setting up gods and th setting up things to worship that was not really God. And we're in a day of false worship. Uh, now, come on, help me out here, huh? We're, we're in a day, did you know, there's a lot of people worship man more than they worship God. <laughs> you say, oh, no, we don't do that. Well, you let certain preachers come in, you'll come hear them. Other preachers come in, you don't want to hear them. <laughs> Some preachers, it ain't about God, it's about their ministry. Amen. Some people come in, all they talk about is their ministry, and they, they want everything to come into their ministry. When they leave, church needs help. Amen. We're in a day that people are worshiping themselves. They're worshiping man. They're worshiping the world today of false worship. We worship, we know not what. Amen. And we worship, we base worship on uh, emotionalism. But every time I ever found in the Bible that anybody ever worshipped God, they fell on their face before God uh, and exalted Him and magnified Him. Amen. And so it was a time of false worship. And then it was not only a time of false gods and false worship, it was a time of false accusations. Verse number 8, the Bible said that when the, uh, uh, the uh, time, uh, when it, first forth that time, certain child angels came near and accused the Jews. They said unto the king, and Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, o king, has made a decree. And he talked about when all this music is played, everybody's supposed to fall down and worship. But he said then, verse 12, there are certain Jews 
whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They, they serve not thy God, nor worship thy golden image, which thou hast set up. And here's the day, my friend, that they accuse, they accuse these men of worshiping the wrong God. They said, they're not worshiping what you set up. They're not worshiping what you want to worship. They're not worshiping and they're not going in your direction. Yep. We're in that day today where, my friend, the political world is accusing us of being wrong. <laughs> you're not going our way. You're not, uh, uh, the, you're, you're not right. You're not true. Uh, and they're accusing. We're in a day, and, and I hate to say this, but we're in a day where a lot of churches and a lot of modernism, my friend, they're accusing us of having the wrong Bible. <laughs> They're accusing us of worshiping the wrong God, singing the wrong songs, amen, praying the wrong prayer. And we're, they're, they're, they're accusing, that's why the attack has came down upon the churches like this that, that believes uh, in the old time way and believes in the truth and believes in God uh, and believes that Jesus Christ is the only way, uh, uh, the truth and the life. And we're under a day of false accusation. We're wrong and they're right. <laughs> amen. Now, come on, help me out. It'll be better in a minute. Amen. Uh, but we're today of false gods and of false worship, false accusation, and we're today of false attitudes. Look at verse 13. Then the king, in his rage and fury, it made him mad. It made him mad because they would not go his way. It made him mad because he didn't worship his God. And he commanded the Shadrach to be brought before him. He brought him before him. And listen to verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar said unto the king, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not uh, you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready at that time, what you hear, the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp, the sack button, the saucer, the simmer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image that I have made well. If you'll just go ahead and fall down, well, everything's going to be okay. Amen? You know what? That's what the world is saying today. If you'll go in our direction. That's what religion says today. If you'll go in our direction, everything's going to be okay. We won't bother you. and we're not. But if you're going to go in the direction that you've been going... Uh, it's not going to be well. Amen. And then the Bible said here in verse 15, he says, But if you worship not, you shall the same hour be cast in the midst of the fire furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? In other words, they said, he said, Listen, my God, I've got my God if you worship him. But if not, we're going to throw you in the fire furnace. And who is that God that can deliver you then? You know, the world thinks their God's greater than our God. <laughs> they got a dead God we got a live God but they think their dead is greater than we are <laughs> I'm going to tell you if it's a dead man laying here <laughs> and Jordan's laying here and you need help you ain't going to ask the dead man to help you you look kind of stupid up here slick saying dead man please help me uh, I need some help and crying out to him I'd say hey there's a man here that's alive there's a man here uh, that, that's got money there's a man here that's got wisdom there's a man here that's got something that can help you uh, my friend in the Indian won't you ask him instead of asking that dead man he can't help you you know what we're living in today where well, they're trying to serve and my friend wanting a dead God to try to help us out. and I'll tell you what we got a living God uh, my friend that's able to do exceedingly a bond and above why is the dead God that has eyes and can't see and ears and can't hear and I can't even got a heart within him. I feel what we got a true God. Amen. They're today the day of the wrong attitude. They think their God is going to help them. They think their way is the best way. Yeah. And so you'd have to say they're in troubled times. They just have to say but I'll say stay in calm in troubled times. I mean, and let me give you the rest of the chapter. Now, they're in troubled times. They're worshiping false gods. If you notice the God, he said, the God I made, the God that I set up, uh, the God, my friend, that I want you to serve. Uh, and my friend, then he gives them a chance. Uh, if you'll just compromise, if you'll just forget about all your God, if you'll just forget about everything you've ever been taught and built, and my friend learned upon, he said, you'll be okay. But if not, uh, we're going to put you in the fire furnace. Uh, my friend, did you know, did you know, I hate to say this, but most men with the book, right there <laughs> most churches would have buckled right there amen <laughs> come on now help me out uh, most, most preachers would have buckled right there amen we seen some of that went on when all this fire started I told somebody a while back I said you can see Lester roll off and Dr. Sattler some of them guys shutting the church down 
<laughs> I said, Dad, I went to jail. Amen. And you know what? Well, we're afraid we will have to go to jail. Amen. We're afraid we will have to suffer a little persecution. But God said, if you live godly, you shall suffer persecution. And most of them, they said, oh, Lord, my friend. And you know what? Brother Jordan, they could have faked it out. They could have faked it out. They said, oh, they said, all right, right, right. Uh, Medico, what do you think? Uh, why don't we go around and we'll just act, we'll just go through the motion, act like old thing's okay, and that way we'll at least we won't have to go through the fire furnace. At least we don't have to face all this stuff. And they could have went over, Brother Mike, and falsely, falsely bowed down and worshiped that and went on. Everything had been okay. The king wouldn't have said nothing to them. They could have went right back to where they was. <laughs> And you know what's what a lot of people are doing? People are doing, they're bowing down. They say, well, it don't matter. We'll just give in a little bit. We'll just let up a little bit. It won't matter. We'll just ease through this. Uh, and my friend, get by. Uh, and my friend, we'll just let up on our convictions. We'll let up on our stand. We'll let up on everything going on. But I'm going to tell you what, we're in trouble time, and they're in trouble time, and they've got a choice. Uh, they've got a choice. Uh, they can bow down under the troubles. Uh, or my friend, they can overcome their troubles uh, and make God who he really is. So let me give it to you through and I'll be through. I thought about, first of all, how to stay calm in trouble time. First of all, you're going to have to face it with confidence. Look in verse number 16. Now they gave them a choice. They said, if you bow down well, if you don't, we're going to put you in the fire furnace. And verse 16, and he said, the last phrase of verse 15, who is that God that shall deliver you? They gave them a question. Who is that God that shall deliver you? Verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Huh? They said, we're not going to bat an eye. <laughs> we don't even have to think about it. We don't even, my friend, have to kind of have a little conviction and a little talk about it. We don't have to, my friend, see what each other believes. If you notice that, they said, we, all three of them. Now, they, don't, they didn't have time to make a conference. They didn't have time to say, what do you think? It's that right. What do you? But all three of them simultaneously uh, said, we are not careful to answer thee. Uh, my friend, our confidence uh, is in God. Who is that God? They said, I, hey, we're not careful. We got confidence uh, in God uh, that he will help us. You know what's wrong with most of us? We've lost confidence in God. <laughs> you know, if you lose confidence in somebody, you ain't got much use for them no more. If they make one mistake and you lose, they can be the best friend in the world. And my friend, you lose confidence. They do one thing wrong and you make you lose confidence in them. You ain't got nothing for them no more. Amen. We don't think about all the mistakes we made. But they can make one little mess up. They can make one little wrong statement. Or they can say something that we don't like or do something. And we lose confidence in them. And boy, it's hard to build that confidence back. I'll tell you, these old boys, eh, my friend, these old boys, eh, they looked in the past. They was back there in chapter 1. Eh, my friend, when God was taking care of them, when everybody else was eating steaks and everybody else was eating beans and taters, eh, they wasn't eating nothing but bread and water. Eh, and my friend, when they came before the king, eh, they flourished more eh, than the others. Eh, they realized, my friend, God in the past had took care of them. Eh, and the same God of the past is the same God that was present. Eh, and the same God was going to help them if they did go into the fire furnace. Eh, they said, we're not careful to answer they hire God that's helped us in the past is the same God today. He'll be the same God tomorrow. And they never lost confidence. We have lost confidence in God. I'm going to tell you, God has been good. God has took care of us in the past. He's helped us in the present. And he'll be there in the future till Jesus comes. I've never lost confidence in God. <laughs> Got to think about this the other day. I was sitting down there and in this meeting this week, and I uh, left here Wednesday night, went to another meeting, and it had more than night services. Some of the old preachers there, some of them I hadn't seen in years, some of them I hadn't seen probably 20 years, that we started together 50 over 50 years ago, and some of them was there, and boy, I was thrilled to death, and all of us old guys are sitting around, my friend the tables are talking, that, and they got to talking, and my friend, brother Jordan, they got talking about traveling down the roads and things, and how the, this, and said, I broke down one time, and, and another one said, I had trouble over here, that, and I was sitting there, brother Jordan, that, and all of a sudden, I just started crying, tears started flowing down my face, that, and, uh, and old brother Cooper, he's about 80 year old, he said, brother Goodson, I said, you okay? I said, oh yeah. I said, I just got 
got to thinking. I've been on the road 55 years. I ain't never broke down one time. I said, I ain't never run out of gas. I said, my friend always made it home. My friend, me, even the snow, the rain, the storms. I said, I've always made it home. I said, I just got to thinking about God's good to me. God took care of me. And I tell you what, I've never, the same God today is still taking care of me. He's still supplying my needs. He's still my friend overshadowing me. I tell you, I'm glad God's been good to me, too good to me to lose confidence in God. Thank God the same God I started with 62 years ago is the same God that's taking care of me now. Don't lose confidence in the time of trouble. Don't lose confidence in God. <laughs> he said, our confidence ain't in your faults, God. Our confidence ain't in that gold that you've got set up over there. Our confidence ain't in your wisdom. Our confidence. We're not careful. <laughs> Woo, huh? Amen. I thought about I thought about it in the book of Acts. I thought about it in the book of Acts chapter 27 when it's in that storm. It looked like it's gonna go under. They they cast anchor, they throw all this stuff away. You know that's what's wrong with us. Every time we have a little storm, we want to throw this away and get rid of this. <laughs> Run down here and make a little possession. Oh God, I'm sorry, I've done this. Amen. But you know what? Paul went down to the bottom of the ship. And him and God had a little meeting. And when he come up from there, they said, don't sail. Storm's too bad. Old Paul stepped up and he said, I believe God. <laughs> come up out of our confidence. He said, I believe God. We're going to lose the ship. No man's going to lose their life. God's going to so protect us. Now one hair's going to fall from your head. And everybody's going to make it on board. You know what? He got down there and got confidence with God. You know what some people need to do in the time of trouble? Find you a place. Bury your head in the throne room of God. And renew your confidence that God is God. And he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Put your confidence in God. I got a little three-year-old grandbaby. And her daddy... Her daddy's a good daddy. And uh, she's three years old. And uh, she loves her daddy. And I told her the other day, I said, she was over at the house, and I said, you want something to eat? She said, my daddy get me something to eat. <laughs> I said, you want to take a bath before you go to the house and they pick you up? My daddy give me a shower. <laughs> I said, well, what? And I said, well, uh, we kept rolling out. I said, you want, you want to put your clothes on? Your daddy's on his way. You want to put your clothes on here? Get out of your jammers. She said, my daddy, my daddy, put my clothes on me. Yeah. And I took her and I said, daddy, 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 that's all I hear. But you know what? My friend, that dad's loved her. That dad's been right there for her. And you know, she's just playing away. And you know what? I said, you hungry? My daddy will feed me. She wasn't worried about eating. When it come time to eat, she knows her daddy. Thank God would take care of her. She had confidence. Boy, I'm glad, thank God, when it comes time to eat. I'm glad God's the one that feeds us. When it comes time to go, God's the one that protects us and help and give us the strength. I tell you what, through many dangers, falls and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that probably sank this far and grace will leave me. I'm glad my confidence, thank God my hope's not in the Pope. My confidence is not in this election. My confidence in trouble times is God. We're not careful to answer that. Yeah. Our God. <laughs> Amen. You know what? The disciples lost it. In John chapter 6. They'd seen, they seen God work and move, raise the dead, open blinded eyes, heal uh, Peter's mother in law, all kinds of stuff they'd seen. They got down there, there's 5,000 men plus women and children need to be fed. And Jesus said, Give you them to eat. They said, Well, Lord, we ain't got but five loaves of two fish. We ain't got 200 pins. What, what, is that among, what is that sufficient? What is that among so many? You know what happened? After all they'd done, God had done, they'd seen him done, they lost confidence in that situation. Ain't that amazing how sometimes we talk about what God done and how God heals and God done this and God's part of me and then some little old tragedy come and we lose all confidence in God. We're just wringing our hands like, what are we going to do? Amen. <laughs> What are we going to do? Come up here, preacher, what are we going to do? Why don't you distrust God like you always have? Why would you lose confidence in God? I've got a doctor. I've been going to him for 35 years. Same doctor. You know, some people change doctors all the time. And I guess that's okay. Sometimes you change it because your insurance won't take. I don't know all that stuff. But I've been going to him for 35 years. 
I was over a while back, and he said, Preacher, he said, you've been coming over here for 35 years. I said, yes, sir. He said, did you know? Did you know? I was looking at the other day. He said, me and my nurse, and you and your wife is the oldest patience we've got. You started out back when I was young, and you're still with us. And said, you've been with us, and said, you've been coming to us longer than anybody else. What he was saying is, some of your mother's done dead, and you're next. I think that's what he tried to say. Uh, he said, you've been coming longer. You've never changed. And I looked at him, and I said, well, Doc, I, I said, you've never done me wrong. You've always tried to do right. And I said, you've always tried to help us, and you always have helped us. And I said, why in the world would I want to leave somebody that I got confidence in? I said, I don't have confidence in a lot of things. But I got confidence. My friend, that you've been there, and you're going to help me. I'll tell you, why would I want to go to a false god? Why do I want to go, my friend, to a religion? Why do I want to go, my friend, to man? Thank God, but I've never lost confidence in God. He has never found me yet. So if you're going to stay calm and jump time, you've got to put confidence in God. I've got to move on. Not only you've got to face it with confidence, you've got to face it with certainty. Look in verse 17. He said, we're not answer, careful to answer thee. And look at verse 17. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. First of all, they said, we're certain of one thing, God's able your furnace ain't no match to God. <laughs> Is that all you got, fire furnace? <laughs> Most of us have been scared of that, wouldn't we? Most of us said, oh, Lord, fire furnace. <laughs> Woo, I can feel the heat now. <laughs> oh, man, I've seen that happen before. Oh, hey, I've heard about people going through that before. And we got so wrapped up looking at the fire furnace. But they weren't looking at that fire furnace. They was looking at God. They said, our God is bigger than what you got. <laughs> If that's all you got, we ain't got no problems. Amen. If all you got is a fire furnace, it ain't no trouble to us. Our God's able. He can blow the fire out. <laughs> he just, <laughs> I just thought about this. <laughs> I just thought about this. He said, hey, you know, God spoke the world in existence. He just didn't let there be a lie. Well, that fire furnace, all God had to do was go, it went out. <laughs> Woo, did you think about that? <laughs> all he had to do was just go, and it went out. It had nothing. Amen. He wouldn't have anything. Uh, my friend, he said, our God is able. But he don't understand that. He said, he's not only able, he will. He will deliver us. Uh, you know what? They were certain. Uh, my friend, they were certain. Uh, our God uh, is not going to let us go. Uh, our God's not going to show up and make a fool out of us over your faults. God, our God will come and he will deliver us. <laughs> I like that certainty, don't you? I thought about my friend David when David was facing that, facing that giant. They said, well, you're just a lad. He's a giant. You know what David said? He said, I done whooped the bear. I done whooped the lion. And listen to this. He said, the same God. <laughs> the delivering from there is going to deliver me. He said, I'm certain that God that come out when that bear come out of there. I don't know about you, my friend. If a bear comes out of the wood, I hope he can run fast. <laughs> I told one fellow, said, but one guy that had bear. We've been having bears in the home. One guy said, Preacher, what's going to happen if a bear gets after you? I said, He'll have to bite me in the hind end because I'm moving, buddy. Amen. <laughs> he won't get me in the front. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, my friend. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I could or not, but I don't know what I'd do if I faced one of them. But can you imagine? David faced that bear. And God helped him. <laughs> he faced that lion. That'd be worse than the bear. And God helped him. And he had so much confidence in God that he said, I am certain that the same God that helped me then is going to help me there. Boy, ain't it good to know when the things you went back through and the things you went through, you can look back and say, man, God, I was, I was broke and God supplied my needs. I was sick and God healed me. I was in trouble and God solved the problems. I was in a storm and God brought peace to the storm. And this, I am certain that the same God that helped me then is going to help me now. I've told this many times. My dad, my dad was going through the, uh, a discouragement, Brother Slick. He's going through discouragement when he got old. And uh, some of you young people, you don't never, you don't face this. When you get old, it's different. Like when I was young, if I told you, listen, do something. I just done it. And we just resigned the church. We resigned the church and left, went somewhere else. You know, or done this, or done that. Just stepped out by faith. 
And they take an offering. We just throw five hundred dollars in. We didn't have it. We go to the bank, borrow it, trust God to help us pay it. And we'd go to work and pay it back. And it was crazy. Now, when you get old, you think, "Whoa, <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't know about this, you know." And my dad was getting older, and he got to thinking about his ministry and, 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 and as becoming older. And I found out even in the ministry, I found out in the ministry, a lot of times the older you get, the less use people got for you. Hey, come on, help me out. You know, it's like kids. Oh, don't get on this. It's like kids. They got a need for their mom and daddy. When they're young, they want to buy them them tennis shoes, and they want to buy them all this stuff, and, and they want to get them all in Nintendo and everything. But when they get old, they ain't got no use for them. They forgot they are where they are because of them. Come on, they'll help you out. They will stick them off some nursing home somewhere. And take everything they got and forget about them. You forgot. They, you are what you are because of them. Amen. <laughs> and my friend, you know when you get older, and my daddy got older, and he's kind of worried about it. And my friend, and brother Mike, he's a praying one day, and he said, God, I'm getting older in my ministry. And he said, I don't know, you know, and I can't go like I used to go. I can't do. And he was worried about his finances and all that stuff. And God said, oh, over, I reminded him, over in Elijah's day, my friend, when he was out there on the back of nowhere, and God brought the ravens in in the morning, and raisins in the evening, and fed him for my friend a year, every morning. Elijah's sitting there, here come them ravens in with food. Uh, every evening uh, Logic sitting there here come the raisin in with food uh, and he said they said the Holy Ghost said son uh, I fed you in the morning of your ministry uh, I'll not forsake you in the evening time of your ministry uh, and then he said I ain't never had the heart of where's the beef amen uh, uh, God took care of him uh, boy ain't you glad my friend I'm certain of one thing uh, my friend he was with me then he's never now and I can't for him to be 90 he'll still be there uh, he'll still be God uh, he'll still be on the throne uh, you can face it with certain that God will never change. Amen. <laughs> I thought about my, I thought about, I thought about my boys. Uh, I got two boys, one of them 43, and other one's 35, 36, something like that. Got seven grand youngins. And I thought about this the other day, and I'm not tooting them on the horn, but I thought about this. Everything that goes on in their life, you know who they'll call? Me. They'll call me. They got car trouble, they'll call. Daddy. I got car trouble. And I'll say, well, what's wrong? And they'll say, doing this and doing that. I say, well, it sounds like so-and-so. But, Daddy, you know, where, where can I take it? And I say, well, take it down there. John, he can take care of that. I'll call him. And or they, they got, you know, the, the washing machine can go down. That washing machine can go down. I'm like, you know, just go buy you one. But it's just like they want you to know that. And my boy called the other day. He said, Daddy, I got plumbing trouble. I got plumbing trouble. Called this week. He said, I got plumbing trouble. I said, what's the matter? And he told me, he said, well, when you first come old, uh, and, and, and I said, or take a shower, it, it backs up and everything. I said, well, you, your sap tank's full. He said, guess what it is? He said, it's in the lines. I said, no, it's in your sap tank. It's full. I don't think so. I said, well, it is. What you call me for? <laughs> you know, that's what's wrong with it. You know a plumber? I said, yeah, here. You got to give him the plumber's number. Let's call him. He's going to tell you the same thing. And you know what? And he he he, he called this plumber. The plumber got up there and he told him on and they stand in the yard. That plumber said, he said, well, I tell you what your problem is. Said said uh, it sounds like it says all of it's acting up. Said your sap tank's probably full. He said, that's what my daddy said. He said your daddy's probably old, got a little bit of wisdom about him. You know what? Check that's wrong with it. Sap tank was backed up. Had had pumped out them thing works fine. Amen. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? Uh, my grandkids come by. They say, what about this? What about that? And you know what they call me? Well, I said, they call you for everything. I said, you know what? You can say they're sport. You can say whatever. But I kind of like it that they got enough confidence in me to know that I'll listen and I'll do what I can to help them. Out, and I'll try to give them some advice. I'm glad they got that confidence. And my friend, it would bother me. It would bother me if they come along and said, uh, uh, called me and said, Papa or Daddy, Watch Brother Doug's number. As much as I love Brother Doug. And I said, what do you need? Well, we got plumbing trouble. We won't call Doug and see if he can help us and bypass me. That hurt my feelings. Amen? <laughs> and I wouldn't care if Brother Doug helped him. And he can send him some money if he wants to. <laughs> it won't bother me a bit, Brother Doug. Help yourself. 
But what bother me that they pass me up? I wonder if it don't bother God when we pass him up eh? and we try to go this direction, that direction. We try to help ourselves. We try to put our confidence in men. They said, I'm going to tell you what. We ain't looking to man. We ain't looking at ourselves. But our God is able eh? and he will. We are certain that he will help us. You can face it, my friend, <laughs> with confidence. You can face it with certainty. Then let me say number three, you can face it with commitment. Look at verse 18. He said, but if not, be it unto you, king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That word commitment means firm pledge or a promise. You know what they said? They said, well, if he, if he rescues us, if he don't rescue us, if we have to go in, if we don't have to go in, we are not going to bow. <laughs> or your God. Uh, they were committed. They said, we're committed to God. We're not committed to your God. We're committed to our God. And if he allows us to burn, we burn. If he allows us, rescues us, he rescues. If we have to go in, fine. If he saves us before we go in, fine. But we're not going to bow down. We're not going to change. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people walk out of this building if they come in here with guns and said, if you, don't, if you want to compromise, if you want to deny his name, go on out of here and the rest of you were going to shoot, you'd be surprised how many knock the hinges off that door. He died for us, but we ain't willing to die for him. He stood for us, but we're not willing to stand for him. I hope that never happens. <laughs> they told a story one time. They told it to be true. I don't know myself, but I heard the story, and they said it was a true story. That some people come in a big old church over in the Carolinas and had some guns and everything and walked in and had everybody stand up. And they said, all right, anybody, everybody, my friend, that, that, that refuses, uh, my friend, to deny the Lord Jesus, to deny the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, you stay. And all of you others, my friend, we're going to shoot everybody in here that stays and get out. They said they, they about emptied the building. They said there was about 25 people still standing there. They said they let their, took their mask off, laid their guns down, said, okay, y'all the true blue, let's go to worshiping God. I wonder if we're that committed. Amen. Boy, we got quiet right here. <laughs> I worry one of them were that committed to stand with the church and stand with God and stand with what's right. Amen. Stand with the book and stand with the truth. People are changing the word of God all the time. People are changing, my friend, going in diff different directions of everything and trying to call it worship. And I'll tell you what, you've got to be committed. My friend, they said we're committed. Whatever God wants, whatever God allows, whatever God sends us through, whatever God rescues us from, we are committed in his hand, not our will, but God's will be done. A couple times, you know, you've got to be committed if we have to go through the troubled times, okay. If we don't, okay. And I'm going to tell you what. You, this virus shook everybody up. Everybody's scared. Amen. Fear. You never seen, i never seen much fear grip the church. Even fear that gripped God's men. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying that. But fear gripped everybody. Amen. We just done everything they said. We just fell right in. Amen. Come on, now, help me out. And we're living in fear. We're living in fear. Uh, I told my boys the other day, I said, get them masks. Let's go down there to the little country store and we'll rob it. We got these masks on. They don't know who we are. I said, we'll just go down and rob it and get some money or something. They don't know who we are. <laughs> they have promoted robbing. <laughs> Amen. Might have been more Western days. They just put all that on and rob them left hand. Amen. But we, I, I, it'd be amazing what they told us to do. We'd just fall right in line. I'm, I'm not against that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not fighting that. I'm not fighting that. Please don't think. I think you ought to protect yourself, and I think they're right in a lot of things. I'm not, I'm not fussing about that. I'm just talking about how easy we are just to fall right in line with whatever they say, whatever they do. It's amazing in preaching today, and I know some churches, it just has happened. My friend, that we believe the old time way. We believe the King James Bible. We believe the blood is the only way. We believe that Christ is the only hope. And we believe there's a heaven coming and all that stuff. And we believe it all of our lives. And my friend, the pastor can leave. They'll call somebody else. And he'll come in and my friend preach something else. And people just fall right in line with whatever's being said. <laughs> Amen. I know, church, I know a church right now in Crossville has stood faithful for years. 
my friend, that repentance, you have to repent to be saved. You got a new preacher, he come in, you know what he did? He started preaching, you don't have to repent, just repeat a prayer after me, and you'll be saved. What he's saying is, I'd save you, just repent a prayer. And you know what, they just fell right in with him. Some of them said, if you, just, if you repeated that prayer, I don't care how many times you've been made baptized, you need to be baptized again. And my family had a whole church wide baptism. All he did is come in. You know what? They just fell apart and fell. Been standing in the old time way for years. We're in that day. You're going to have to be committed to what you stand for and what you believe. Amen? And then let me say something else. You're going to have to face it with courage. Look at verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his image was changed to get shattered right me, shattered and bed to go. Therefore we spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more that it want to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind shattered right me, shattered and bed to go and cast them in the fire first. These men who were bound in their clothes and their hosen and their hats and their other garments were cast in the midst of the burning fire furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urged at, my friend, the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame flew those, slew, uh, uh, fire slew those men. That t- somebody said, well, that fire wasn't really real. Well, it slew these guys. <laughs> Tell me it wasn't real. Amen. And the Bible said, uh, uh, it, 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 where is it at? In verse 23, and these three men shot right, me, me, me shot in the go, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fire furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and said, Did not we cast three men bound in the fire furnace? They answered and said unto him, Lo, true, O king. He answered, Lo, I see four. And they walked in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. The form of the, uh, the fourth is like unto the Son of God. They was committed. Huh? And they had courage. You know, some people are committed to the actual lay hands on them and head to the furnace. It's easy to say, oh, yeah, God, we'll stand with you, Pastor. We'll go to jail with you until the law shows up and puts the cuffs on you. <laughs> That's a different story, isn't it? That's a different story. Uh, come on, L.M. <laughs> you ever think about old Joshua over when Joshua had, had a promise from God, and he said, you know, Moses, my servant's dead. Moses, my servant's dead. And he said, you're going to take over. His whole project, his whole uh, thing. And he said, uh, Be strong and of good courage. He said, For unto this people thou shalt divide and here is the land. I swear to the Father, only be strong and courageous that thou may observe to do all that the law. And he goes on and said, Have I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither by thee be thou dismayed. For the Lord is thy God, and, thy, and with thee wheresoever thou goest. Be strong and be of good courage. You know what? It takes courage. It takes courage in these days to stand. It takes courage, my friend, to go and f- go through some things. See, see, we're always wanting God to get us out of everything. I don't ever find where these guys beg God to get them out of it. And say, God, don't allow us to go through the fire furnace. They said, our God, they didn't say, our God won't put us in the fire furnace. He's too good to God. Oh, well, no, God, God allowed him to go. He allowed Daniel to go through. The, he didn't get Daniel out of the line, did he? Amen. He didn't get David out of fighting the giant. Uh, he, allowed, he didn't save the disciples before they got in the storm. He saved them when they got in the storm. Sometimes it takes courage just to go on and go through. Just go on and go through what you have to go through. Face what you have to face. They don't tell them what we're going to face in these days. But you know what? It takes courage. You had that word courage. I looked that word up, courage. And you know what it means? It means fearless, brave, uh, uh, with the right attitude. Have courage to go on. And fight. Go on. Stand. I got a grandson just went to he's in the military. He's about five weeks into, the, into his training. And uh, in, uh, he went to the Marines. And he come talk to me one day. And I told him, I said, son, I said, the first two weeks, if you've ever been in the military, you know what I'm talking about. First two weeks, I said, all they do is harass you. They ain't going to train you nothing. I said, they're just going to harass you. They're going to cuss you and talk about you and call you names and do everything in the world. Make you do push-ups. I said, hey, you going to think that's the meanest people in the world? What have I done? But I said, if you can make it the first two weeks, they'll start training you. I said, it's still going to be hard. It's still going to be difficult. But I said, you just take hers. And you think about when I get through with this. When I get through with this training, I'm going to be a Marine. When I get through with this training... I've got some stuff behind me. 
and I can march on forward and do something better and fight for my country and make my dad proud and make my papa all proud. And, 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 and I, I, I said, just take courage to go on and face all that stuff that you're going through. I got a, I got a word from him. We got a word from him the other day. You know what he had in that, you know what he had wrote? Courage. <laughs> he grabbed on to courage. He's pushing through. He's pushing through. He don't want to be a failure. He said, Papa, I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to go away. Well, I don't want to get in the middle of that and get me so hard. I have to throw my hands up. He said, I know out yonder somewhere the training's going to be over. And my friend, the hard time's going to be over. And I'm going to, they're going to put me in a place to serve. And they're going to put me in a place, my friend, to represent our country. I'm going to tell you what, whatever you're going through today, just be of good courage. God's got something out there for you. If you just wait through with courage, he got something out there for you. On the other side of that tribal. The other side of that problems, he got something for you. <laughs> Amen. Well, this, this little illustration keeps coming to my mind. I'm going to give it to you and quit. You know, when you study and you pray and you study and you pray and you study and you pray, sometimes you feel like, you feel like, you know, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but you're putting something in here. You're putting something in. You're putting something in. It's kind of like a piggy bank. You, you know, you, you remember you used to have them little old piggy banks? I got one the other day for my little old granddaughter. I sat there at the house, and I told her, I said, now, when you get change, save it, bring it over. Papa's will put it in here, and I said, Papa will match it, and we'll put change in there. I said, you can, you know, build you up some money and stuff. And she's just three. He always tickled her to death. And so we got that little piggy bank. But you know, we used to all, we used to all have them piggy banks. Everybody have a piggy bank when you're a kid. You know, every time your little change you put in there. You steal your mama's change. Put it in there. <laughs> go to the store with your daddy. They get changed. Daddy, Papa, or Daddy, I want that change. You'll put that in my big paint. You know, and go to your Papa's house, and Mamma's house, and beg change. You know, you put a little change in there, a little change in there, a little change in there. And somewhere down the road, you you get to wanting something and needing something. You remember that? You know what we used to do? We used to get that piggy bank. We turned it upside down. You know, and you'd shake it. <laughs> I don't know why my, you know, they, they had piggy banks that had little plugs in them. Mother day, they would give someone with a plug in it. Just have that hole where you put it in. And you'd shake it thing, shake it thing, shake it thing. And a little bit would fall out, a little bit here, a little bit, and you get aggravated. Just a little here, you know, dime fall out here in the corner, and you shake, 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 and then dime fall out. And you think, yeah. you know what, after a while, you know what to do? <laughs> you wouldn't got a hammer. <laughs> you don't ever do this. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't got a hammer, and you just busted it wide open. Yeah. Got all of it out. But you could use it. You know what? Sometime in trouble time, God's just trying to shake us. Get a little out of us what we've been putting in. And sometimes, you know what? We can't, we got, can't shake enough, so he just takes a hammer and breaks us. And that that's inside comes out. He's trying to get that faith that we talked about. He's trying to get that courage. He's trying to get that confidence. He's trying to get that certainty out of our hearts and lives that we'll step forth and say, you know, you know, when you when you break that thing, you get all that change. You come in and say, man, Daddy, take me to the store. I've got enough. Right. <laughs> I've got enough. You know what? Sometimes God's trying to send us through troubled times. He's trying to break us. And to that certain place that we've got God, we've got grace, we've got mercy, we've got truth, we've got God. Amen. I'm telling you, in trouble time, and, and what I said a while ago was, there ain't no telling. This virus ain't the end of it. I mean, they, there's no telling what we're going to have to go through. Because the Bible says it's going to get worse and worse and worse. There's no telling what we're going to go through. But you know what? In trouble times, let me read it to you. Face it with confidence. Face it with certainty. Face it with commitment. Face it with courage. And you know what you can do? You can expect a victory. Look at it. Look at the rest of that chapter. When they come out of that fiery furnace, Verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furnace. He spake, said, hey, boys, come up out of there. And they come up out of there, and the Bible said, uh, they come out of the midst of the fire. Fire still burning. Can you imagine that, just walking up out of the fire? And the prince and the governor and the captain and all them people come running over there, and the, 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 the fire had no power. There was not a hair of their head since. Neither their coats was changed. Neither the smell of fire. And the fire was real because it burnt the bands off of them. Bought the ropes that they was tied up. 
They come out of there. And listen to this. Verse 28 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angels, delivered his service, to trust in him, and have changed the king's words, yielded their bodies, as he said, uh, that they might not serve, uh, that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language, he goes on and said, they're going to serve the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego serves. You know what this world needs to see? They need to see that we know the true God. And somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, my mother and father-in-law, bless their heart, they're both dead and in heaven now. They weren't real church people. They weren't real church people. And uh, they remember the First Baptist Church, but never went. My father-in-law, or my, yeah, my father-in-law, he, he raised up in the Church of Christ. And, and, uh, but they both joined the First Baptist Church there in Newport and Never went, but they joined. In fact, my wife signed the card and was supposed to have been saved, going to heaven at that same church. But they didn't know nothing about God. Didn't believe in God. Didn't, did, I mean, they, they, God was just somebody. And uh, I got in the family. And, uh, and we started traveling, preaching. Kay's going with me. Her mama told her, her, mama told her one day, she said, if, you'll, if you won't divorce him, I'll pay for it. And we'll get you an apartment and we'll buy you any kind of car you want if you'll just leave him. He's a nut. Going all over the place preaching, serving, doing all the stuff he's doing. He's wasting his time and life. You're going to starve to death. That's what happened when we first got married. And, uh, my, and God put my wife, I probably never told this, but God put my wife to the test. She was mixed and mingled. What to do? And... Uh, I mean, we was starving. <laughs> we was struggling. And uh, I was working a little old job with Jordan. And the Lord, Lord impressed me to transfer to Greensboro, North Carolina. I put in for a transfer. I got it. Transferred over there. I packed our little apartment up. Kate stayed with her mom and daddy, trying to make her mind on what she's going to do. I told her, I said, listen, I called home one day and I said, listen. I'll be back in Friday and I'm going to pack that haul this stuff over here. If you won't go, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. The day I proposed to you, I told you I was going to serve the Lord and travel up and down this country and preach the gospel. And if you still want to get in on that, that's fine. I got a call about two days later. And she's just sobbing on the phone. I said, What's the matter? She said, I told mom and daddy you, the way you proposed to me. And I said, I do. And I ain't changed my mind. If you'll just come on and get me. You know what the Holy Ghost did? The Holy Ghost said, put in for a transfer back. I ain't been down for two weeks. I put in for a transfer back. I got it. I called her. I went home, unpacked all the stuff, put it all back out. We sat right there and served God out of that place. My mother-in-law and father on their dying days. Dying days. It's say, Mike, pray for us. Mike will help us. Mike's true. They tell people when they go through problems, they'd give them my phone number and they'd say, your mother-in-law said to call you. You know how to get a hold of God. Boy, I'm glad I didn't give in to marital pressure. I'm glad I stayed true to God. You know what happened? They seen the same God I seen. They recognize that God he serves is God. You know what your family needs, some of your friends need, and your home needs, and your kids need? They need to see that that God that you serve is real. Amen. And you're committed to Him. You're committed, and you're, you're certain that He's going to help you, and He's going to take care of you. I'm glad, thank God, we serve a God that's real. Hey. Hey. Or get exalted and say, God, increase our faith. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.